46. Now we're getting into some high math. 46. Uh, what would that be? 54. 54. That's four and a half years to you and me, right? Yes. Yeah. You understand how long you can go to prison? Yes. Yeah. Now, do you understand that if you're not a citizen of the United States, you are hereby advised that a conviction of the offense to which you are pleading guilty may have the consequences of deportation, exclusions from admission to the United States, or denial of naturalization pursuant to the laws of the United States. Do you understand that? Yes. Yeah. Have you sought advice regarding what the consequences? Do you have a legal status here in the United States at this time? No. No. So that's not in jeopardy if you enter a plea of guilty. You don't have a green card that you'd be deported on if you were found guilty of this offense, correct? Do you understand the warning that I just gave to you? Yes. Yes. Now, a guilty plea is a complete admission of your guilt. If you enter a plea of guilty, you'll be waiving all of your constitutionally guaranteed trial rights. This court could enter judgment and proceed immediately with sentencing. You'll be waiving your right to a trial. In fact, you'll be waiving your right to a trial by jury. Understood? Yeah. <coughs> you'll be relieving the state of Ohio of the obligation of proving your guilt on as to this offense by proof beyond a reasonable doubt. They have to prove each and every element. You're presumed innocent right now. If you enter a plea of guilty, you're waiving that presumption of innocence, you're relieving the state of Ohio the burden of proving your guilt. You understand that? Yes. You're also giving up your right to have 12 jurors unanimously decide your guilt or innocence. Understood? Yes. All 12 jurors would have to agree that you're guilty before you can be convicted. Now, by pleading guilty, you're waiving your right to issue subpoenas to force witnesses to court to testify on your behalf. Mr. Brewer can get those subpoenas filed for you. Uh, Mr. Brewer would have the right to cross-examine and question the state's witnesses to testify against you. Of course, you could remain silent and not testify, and the state could not use your silence against you. Do you understand all those rights? Yes. Yeah. Are you sure? Yes. Yeah. You understand at trial, this court would allow you to be dressed in street clothes, assuming that you behave yourself. The jury would never know that you're in custody. You wouldn't be handcuffed, you'd be in street clothes. Do you understand that? Yes, yes, thank you. You still want to waive your right to a trial? Yes. You want to enter a plea of guilt? Yes. Respectfully, we waive reinstatement. Thank you. Thank you. Do you have any objection? No, Your Honor. I'll be explicit. You've reviewed, is there a bill of information? Bill of particulars, Your Honor. Our bill of particulars. Did you build, review the bill of particulars with your client? Yes, sir. And he wishes to uh, waive a formal reading and admits that those facts constitute the offense? Yes, sir. <coughs> you understand the difference between a guilty plea and a not guilty plea? Yes, yes. Sir. Have there been any representations or promises made to you other than the state has agreed to amend the charge? Anybody threaten you or force you or in any way force or intimidate you to want to come to court today and enter a plea of guilty? No, sir. Do you have any questions? All right, to the charge of attempted felonious assault in violation 2923.02 and 2903.11b1 of the Honor Revised Code, felony of the third degree. This time, how do you wish to plead? Guilty. 
Can I ask you whether this is your signature on this piece of paper? No. Well, have you seen this document called yes. Guilty Plea and Jury Waiver? Yes. Did you read it? Yes. Did you go over it with uh, Mr. Brewer? Yes. Did Mr. Brewer answer all your questions? Yes. And on the back side, is this your signature? Yes. Does your signature on this document signify that you read, you understand, and you agree to everything contained in this document? Yes. Do you have any questions? No, sir. You want this court to accept your plea of guilt? Speak up. Yes. All right. Court will find that Mr. Gomez was indeed before the court, represented by counsel here in open court. He was advised regarding well, his constitutionally guaranteed trial rights. He's made a known intelligent voluntary waiver of those rights. He entered a plea of guilty to count one as amended. The court will find him guilty of that offense. Attempted felonious assault, felony of the third degree. Order. Wish to have a PSI prepared? I, I believe the state, yes, sir. The state is in the Or if you don't want a PSI, as long as it has an opportunity, that's all I'm asking. Well, we're a PSI. It was a matter for sentencing on June 16th. That'll be at 9 o'clock in the morning this calendar year. Jury trial scheduled by served by one of these fine deputies with a copy of the indictment. Because the deputy action. Thank you very much. Now that charges you with two counts of non-supported defendants, each a felony of the what level? Fourth degree, Your Honor. Fourth degree, three serious, each carry up to 18 months in prison. <coughs> you have the right to an attorney. If you cannot afford an attorney, you have the right to have one appointed to represent you. Are you going to be able to afford to hire an attorney? Yes, sir. Have you ever filled out one of these indigency affidavits? Um, yes, sir. Absolutely. Just filled out by Dana Fan. Dana Fan, did you want? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You have it. Then I handed it to the judge. Lots going on here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's your signature on this document? Yes, sir. Would you raise your right hand? Swear the information contained in this affidavit is true and accurate to the best of your knowledge and belief. Yes, sir. Let's put your hand down. Court will find that you're indigent. the public defender's office to represent you. <coughs> the court's going to enter a plea of not guilty to these charges on your behalf. You've got the right to listen to the prosecutor read that indictment to you or you can read it yourself. Are you able to read and understand the English language? Yes, sir. You want to waive hearing the prosecutor read it to you? Yes, sir. You want to listen to him read it to no, you? No, no. In front of all these cases? No, sir. He don't have to do that. He doesn't have to do that. <laughs> all right. Might sense so. Now, it's true. And we got to talk about your bond. How is it that you turned, did you turn yourself in on this warrant today? Yes, sir. Where do you live? I live in Beverly Council. Uh, 
here in Butler County. Yes, sir. How long have you been there? I've been there since uh, February. February. How old are you? I'm 35. And uh, where do you work? I work as a subcontractor for a friendly contract, friendly enterprise. I'm sorry. All right. So that's what construction type work? Yeah, rehabbing trailers and dorm rooms. Were you working on that trailer that lady was here earlier today? No, he was actually one of the grab but I don't think that's the case. <laughs> right. Stay, uh, stay wish to be heard on the issue of bond. Uh, no, I have no objection with the one bond. Um, I think the rearage is approximately 42,000. Yes. Should not stop like that. I'm going to continue your case the next Thursday. Your attorney will be here to talk to your attorney. Understood? In the meantime, uh, you're going to go to work as a condition of your bond. You're going to pay your child support. You're going to report to the pretrial services. You're going to have any problem passing a drug screen? Uh, shouldn't. But marijuana, like two weeks ago. All right. So after today, if there's marijuana in your system, that's going to be a problem. You may have your bond revoked. Yes, yes. Take your marijuana money and pay your child support with her. All right, you have any questions? You are going to have to deal with the warrant that is outstanding. Okay, you are ordered to return here on May 12th, 9 a.m. As long as he can wait, I get all the paperwork done. That's like the only way to get this warrant resolved so you're not subject to arrest by having an outstanding warrant. Just for you to go with the deputies down in the basement and take you to jail and handcuff you at the French and release you. Wait for what? Maybe an hour. I got no problem waiting. If you can wait, I can get the paperwork. So you'd rather not go down into the dungeon, be handcuffed? No, sir, I don't know. Really? You don't want to be? No. All right, well, let's turn yourself in over to jail and get the warrant resolved. Thanks. It's going to take at least an hour. Maybe more. You've got to eat lunch sometime. No, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> sir, here's what I want. When the bailiff releases you, I want you to wait outside in those chairs outside this courtroom until he releases you. Understood? Sorry. Right. Until I come to see you. Until I come to see you. With some paper. Yes, sir. Now, when do you have to come back to court? Um, I'm sorry. I'm kind of nervous. I'm I know. Take it easy. It's on that yellow sheet, sir. Next Thursday. It's next Thursday morning, 9 o'clock. Okay. Well, every Thursday, we're here. Okay. You're here next Thursday. You go to work, but after you report to the jail, then you got to report to pretrial services, right? Okay. And this young lady here will give you more information. Okay. You have any questions? No, sir. When do you have to be back here? Next Thursday. Next Thursday. Next Thursday. Next Thursday. Next Thursday. Next Thursday. All right, you stand for the next case? Uh, there's one expungement to deal with. Is there a, yes. your excuse, Mr. Kane, sir? Next case. That's the one versus Jason Siler, CR 9604-0369. We're here on an expungement. Yes, sir. Matthew Dixon appearing on behalf of Mr. Siler. All right, thank you for being here. <coughs> In this case, I have received a report from the Adult Probation Department. It indicates that your client is eligible and recommends that this court expunge your client's record, which I'm inclined to do unless 
there's something you want to bring to my attention that might change my mind. Yeah. Well, everything that was submitted to the court was true, and I am sure that if there were anything else that I was unaware of, the adult probation department would have found it. So you'd like me to grant the relief that you prayed for for your client? Yes, Your Honor. Stay with me here. Hang on. Before we find that uh, it's appropriate to expunge the record and uh, expungement is going to be sent. Looks like the only law enforcement agency is the Butler County Sheriff's Office. Was there any, any other police cruisers there at the scene? Yeah. From other agencies? Okay. I think that the uh, Hamilton, Fairfield. We uh, had the DEA as well. Is the DEA? That was my understanding. I don't see anything more than the DEA. Here's what I would suggest that you do. Is Kim back here? Yeah, Your Counsel, I'm going to hand you the paperwork. Ms. Reynolds is an expert on this. All right. Why don't you go over this paperwork with her and make certain that all these agencies are being notified of your client's expungement so it doesn't come back to mom later on. Thank you. She'll, she'll tell you where to go. Sir, why don't you wait out in the hallway for your turn? Any other cases, Mr. Burris? Sorry, I All right. Next case, please. Your Honor, can we just have a minute? You don't have to be off the bench, but. Well, in that case, the court will take a minute recess. Please rise. Court's in recess. You guys want to arrange your mics? Mr. Rapier? Sir. You take your client to the defense I'll table. Put her over there. You can be seated, folks. Check, check.
Report of Common Pleas in and for Butler County. The Honorable Chief Tim Spade presiding is now in session. Please have a seat, ladies and gentlemen. Right. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. State of Ohio versus Rebecca A. Kenner, case number CR 2015-12-1784. Defendant is present in the courtroom along with her attorney, Kyle Rapier. We are set today for sentencing. Mr. Rapier, are you and your client prepared to pursue sentencing? Your Honor, we are prepared to proceed. Received the memorandum that you wrote on behalf of your client. A reviewed pre sentence investigation report. been shared with counsel. There was a mitigation forensic report prepared by the Forensic Evaluation Service Center pursuant to also known as the mitigation report that was ordered and prepared in accordance with revised code section 2947.06 of the Ohio revised code. The provisions uh, Paragraph B, my recollection of that code section, provides to the effect that this report is to be made in writing, in open court, and in the presence of the defendant. The way I read that statute, this report should be marked as an exhibit, distributed to counsel, and open for public review if someone, anyone might be inclined to want to do it. Does the defendant have any argument or law or authority to the contrary? Your Honor, exactly as you have explained it is how I've explained it to my client. We have no objection to it being marked as an exhibit available for public review. She understands there's a number of confidential things that would seem confidential, but that, that will be placing it into the public eye, and that is fine. That is our wish, unless the state has an objection. Does the state wish to be heard on this court's interpretation of the law? No, Your Honor. The state defers to the court. Very well. This will be marked as Roman numeral one with today's date. Your Honor, that is fine. I'm I'm the one that requested the evaluation, so if it's a defense marked as a defense exhibit, I have no objection to that. Perhaps a joint exhibit. No. It's the court's report. The court ordered it. It's mine. Roman numeral one. Thank you. Today's Your date. Exhibit. I'm going to need that back, Rick, after you're finished. <coughs> now, we also need to discuss before we get any further along in this sentencing hearing whether or not <coughs> counts one, two, and three are allied offenses. The court has considered uh, the sentencing memorandum, which addressed that, and brought to the court's attention the case of the State of Ohio versus Craycraft, the 12th Division, 12th, 12th Division case. The court has also reviewed the authority of the force, which is the current authority, State v. Ruff, the most recent pronunciation on this topic from the Ohio Supreme Court. Is there any argument or legal authority that you wish to present to the court on the topic of allied offenses? No additional uh, legal authority, Judge. I will rest on my motion. Um, I would indicate that the, the court needs to take a look at the Bill of Particulars. It's, I think they were read into the record. They were. At the time your client entered the plea, we agreed that those were the facts. On Correct. Which she was entering a plea with the exception of... Uh, there was some language in the bill of particulars. Find it here. <coughs> the words by herself using was to be deleted as it pertained to count two. Other than that, the court will consider the facts as set forth in the bill of particulars. Thank you, Judge. Is there an agreement? Yes. Is the state in agreement with that? Yes, Your Honor. Any argument on whether or not these offenses are allied? Your Honor, I would defer to the court regarding the authority that the court's aware of the pertinent authority. Well, the court
court finds that the Craig Travis case very strong authority. The court has also considered the, the test as announced in State v. Ruff. The court is to look at whether the offenses are dissimilar in import or significance. The court is to look at whether the offenses were committed separately. The court is to consider whether the, uh, the offenses were committed with a separate animus or motivation. Count one is the defendant was convicted of involuntary manslaughter. Count two, child endangering. Count three, permitting child abuse. Involuntary manslaughter becomes manslaughter as a result of committing count two, child endangering. The defendant's convictions in counts two and three uh, all result in the death of the child. I cannot, uh, well, I think the law guides this court to find that the offenses are simply allied. And uh, I can't think of any valid arguments to suggest otherwise. And I have not heard the state presented unless the state has some this very saving moment to bring to my attention. Your Honor, the state was in the same position that the court is. That the state does not have a valid argument against finding these allied. But we'll find that the offenses are allied under Revised Code Section 2941.25. So, having made that determination, the state is now given the option of deciding which count the state would like to proceed on. The state would elect to proceed to sentencing on count one in voluntary manslaughter. So ordered. Very well. Now, in terms of sentencing and mitigation, are, are you and your client now prepared to proceed with sentencing? We are. If the court would allow, there is a number of family members that wish to speak. I would like them to speak briefly, and then I would like an opportunity for my client to speak on her own behalf and for myself to speak on her own behalf, the judge. <coughs> Very well. Very well. Who is the first person you'd like to call? Nina Kenner. Kelly, I don't want to chase you out of your position there, but that's a pretty good place for the person who wish to speak. Who's coming forward? Is she able to? Uh, yes, sir. Would she like to speak just from her position right there? I just needed you over here. you I know that you've heard a lot of terrible remarks about Beth Kenzie's dad and her family what a horrible mom Becca was I'm telling you Ken Kenzie was so loved by Beck she was the center of Becca's life Kenzie was so smart and Becca worked with her every day she just gave us so much joy in life. In the last five months, we have lost so much. The grief has just been almost unbearable. Becca, please don't make her suffer any more than what she has. She'll have to live with a heart of grief for the rest of her life. I beg of you, please, Beck. We've lost Becca. We've lost both our babies. One of them will never be coming home. She was just everything. She was so important. She loved us. 
she left this world, leaving us with so many memories, with so much love to cherish for the rest of our life. Please You're referring me. to Ken? Yes. Did you said there was another child? Wyatt, Becca's baby that she had while she was in jail. Brad took everything from her. What more can be done to her to punish her? She lost her whole family. <laughs> this sent her up her life. I just, please, please don't do any more to her. <laughs> Sorry that you're going through this. Please be careful. Kenzie, anytime step. Becca would say, I love you, baby. Kenzie would always say, I love you more. And she did. Kenzie loved more. She loved everybody more. Becca is a wonderful mom. Please. Don't make her hurt anymore. That's all. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Alright, who else is going to speak? My baby. Your Honor, uh, my client's father will speak. His name is Douglas <laughs> Kenner. No, no, no. I no. love you, honey. I love you, baby. Man, turn to your seat. Turn to your seat. Who, who's going to speak next? Sir, please come forward. His name is Douglas Kenner. You're not to have contact with the defendant, ladies and gentlemen. Go to the witness stand. Start with your name. Thank you. Hi, my name is Douglas R. Kenner II. I'm Rebecca's father. Judge, uh, it's my client's great grandmother. Her name is Josie Fitzpatrick. She asked to speak as well. Josie?
behalf of my client your honor in speaking with her I will say the law requires a punishment in this case and she understands that There's no greater duty on this earth than the care and custody of your children she loved her daughter but she failed to remove her daughter from a dangerous situation that kept escalating and eventually led to the death of her daughter when I met with her I wanted to know why and I know everyone wants to know why and I don't have a good answer for that and neither does Rebecca she has no mitigation she has no excuse all we have are the facts and the fact that I became aware of is when Rebecca was 13 years old she was brutally raped and it went beyond rape it went to attempted murder the individual that raped her and drug her at age 13 into a barn attempted to drive a nail through her throat after he was done raping her he got up and he looked for gasoline to light her on fire the evaluation that i had performed indicates that rebecca has ptsd as well as well as other diagnosed conditions such as major depressive disorder i will offer a mitigation that i believe Rebecca is not the same as a normal individual that would have a normal life and normal upbringing. She lacks the capacity to protect that she should have. It's not an excuse. It's not an affirmative defense. I only offer it as mitigation. I know Rebecca would like to speak her own behalf, but I'll leave you with this. She has told me from the very start if she could switch pace places with Kinsley, she would do it voluntarily. And her actions since she was charged shows that. She testified at grand jury. She waived a right. She knew that it would result in an indictment against her. She threw that aside. She never remained silent. She testified willingly. She pled as charged to, to these charges. So there is mitigation, but the mitigation is not an excuse in this case, Judge. At this time, I'd like her to say a few words on her own behalf. Um, very nerve-wracking for an individual that's never been in the public limelight. I've asked her just to try to put this aside, put all the cameras aside, and just for her to have a conversation with the bench. She's very nervous, but I'd like her an opportunity to speak on her own behalf. Okay. Your opportunity. Is that mitigation? Do you understand that? Yes. So just ignore everything else. What do you want to share with her? I do take responsibility for not getting my daughter out of the situation that we were in. 
but I did love my daughter. I know a lot of people have said that I allowed this to happen, I watched him do it, I didn't do anything, and that's not true. I love my daughter, and I didn't just lose my daughter. I've lost so much more. She was the love of my life. We did everything together, and to call home and not hear her voice is hard. Every time I close my eyes, I see her smile, I see her face. And the night before she passed, the last thing she said to me was, I love you more, Mommy. And that's all I hear constantly. And if I could take my daughter's place, I would take it in a heartbeat. But I can't, no matter what I say or do, it's not gonna bring my daughter back, I know that. And I've lost my son too. I can't get pictures of him. I can't visit with him. I can't talk to him. And I've lost my life too. I've lost everything that has ever made me happy because of one mistake. Okay. Anything else? Okay. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Heidi Morgan, the paternal grandmother, would like to speak. Right here. Just got some more clothes. Just put it here. Just put it here. Okay. Okay. Do you need another tissue? Okay. Start with your name. I'm Heidi Morgan. I don't know where to start. I wrote, tried to write this so many times. I, I couldn't write it. So now I'm here in front of you just speaking. Good. And after listening to them speak, it, it kind of leads me into a little bit more than where I was going to speak originally. Um, We as a family lost our granddaughter. I lost my granddaughter. Scott lost his daughter. It, it started with a phone call. And from that phone call, we go to a hospital and we see our grandbaby lay in there. We don't get to say goodbye. And from there, we're planning a funeral. And from there, you go home to pack and put away things that you shouldn't have to. I'm still looking at things in my house her clothes, her toys, her bed, her pictures. We didn't get to see Kinsley. We saw her when she was born. And up until she was a year old, we only saw her three times because Becca did not allow us to see her. So for the first year of her life, we were denied Kinsley. No, you wasn't. We were denied Kinsley for the first year of her life until I sent Becca a letter and told her that I was taking her to court. After that, we were allowed Kinsley, and I got her every other weekend, if not more than that. Becca was a good mom. I will tell you that. Becca was a good mom. I will not deny that. Up until the weekend, Kinsley would come home with diaper rashes, simple things like that. But up until that month she got with Brad, and that weekend before 
I sent her a message and I asked to get Kinsley. I went to the parking lot of Toys R Us where we met and I was denied Kinsley. She did not meet me. I waited for 45 minutes. We text back and forth and she did not show up. That was the Saturday before Kinsley passed away. The next, I sent her a message and told her to tell Kinsley I loved her. She told me I could give her the following weekend. The next contact I had was going to the hospital. So from there, our family is now in the situation we are in. And we didn't only lose Kinsley, we also were planning on having Wyatt. We, we painted baby rooms, we had baby showers, we planned on having that baby. We were told that was Scott's baby. So we, we lost that baby as well. It's not only the Kenners and Becca's family that lost that baby, we lost that baby. So what I have now, I was given at the funeral home. The last thing that I was given of Kinsley to remember my baby by was her hair. And I took her hair, pieces of it, and I braided it because that's all that I have left of my baby. Thanks to Becca. Because Becca wasn't a responsible mother. She did not watch and care for my granddaughter like she should have. She should have been there to watch that baby. No amount of time in this world is going to bring Kinsley back. No amount of time that she does. And I pray, I pray that God will do justice because justice can't be served. I, no amount of time we give her is going to be enough. Thank you for listening to me right on. And I think Scott wants to say something. He didn't originally, but I think he does. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry. 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 Please come forward. If you, you wish to speak, come forward. Let me start with your name. I'm Scott. Scott Smith, Kinsley Dad. How old are you, young man? 22. 22. Yes, sir. What do you want to bring to the court's attention? I mean, I ain't, I ain't going to say nothing too bad. I mean, trying to degrade nobody right now, but me and Becca were together on and off for a while. Becca was a good mom. She tried. She did her best to try. Got the occasional dirty milk, I mean milk colder thing. You had the occasional diaper rash, all that, but she still tried. I mean, she tried to take care of Kinsley. Up until Brad, I mean, Becca talked on and off for forever. I mean, we talked on and off. I was told the new baby was mine. I was excited about it up until she met Brad, something changed. I mean, I, me and Becca talked all the time. When she met Brad, there was something that changed about Becca. But even though you put yourself in a situation, all I'm asking, ma'am, don't let up on the sentence. I've seen people who do less go to jail for more. I've watched in other states, I've looked up other states do what they do, the death penalty and all that. Do not let up on this sentence just because she put herself in that situation. I mean, that's my one thing. I, I mean, you can't you can't stress it enough. That was my baby girl that got taken. I mean, the videos, the pictures you can see all over the world. That I mean, that was that was my world. It was also Becca's world. But she put herself in a situation where my daughter got taken. I just, I mean, just because you put yourself in a situation don't mean you should get away with it. I, I really feel you put yourself there and you should deal with the consequences. Just like drinking. You drink and then decide to drive home, you put yourself in that situation. It's just 
one of the things here. I think there's a don't let them do this just because okay. someone's trying to get out of here. Yeah. That's all I'm really going to say. Everybody else wish to speak on behalf of the state? Nothing more on behalf of the state, Your Honor. Thank you. Any legal reason why the court may not proceed with sentencing? No, Your Honor. We're prepared to proceed, please. now stands before the court convicted to be sentenced for involuntary manslaughter. It's a felony in the first degree, violation 2903.04, where it's considered purposes and principles of sentencing, recidivism, and the seriousness factors. The seriousness factors uh, doesn't get any more serious than this. Quite frankly, you look at you look at the circumstances of the case. It's difficult for this court to find any sympathy for Ms. Kennedy. And then you look at her life. You look at the things that have happened to her and her ability to be a mother. And her ability. To discharge the responsibilities of a parent. She was not equipped. It wasn't just one bad choice. It was a series of bad choices. Where your life had placed you, put you in relationships, having children in a relationship with a co-defendant, allowing him to have access to your child seems to me it's a much bigger, broader issue that's brought us to where we are today. The court will, uh, of course, prison is presumed necessary Court will find that the presumption of prison has not been rebutted. To find that the defendant is not amenable to available community control sanctions. And the lady, you were sentenced to serve 11 years in the Ohio Department of Rehabilitation and Corrections. You receive credit for time served. The court will not impose a fine or order that you pay the court costs associated with this case. What is the violations. You have the right to appeal your conviction. You have the right to appeal the sentence. In order to preserve your appellate rights, you must file a notice of appeal within 30 days. If you're indigent, you have the right to have an attorney appointed to represent you. <coughs> to have the appeal filed with the payment of court costs and have any documents necessary for your appeal provided to you without cost. Now, Release control is mandatory for a period of five years. The court has taken into consideration the defendant's financial resources, her ability to pay financial sanctions both now and in the future. It will simply require that the defendant pay the court costs in this case and not the fine. Are there any questions regarding the sentence? No, Your Honor. No, Your Honor. Will continue to be held in the Butler County Jail until she can be transported to prison. All right, Ms. Kenner, good luck to you. Thank you. That'll be all.
the rest of these stay in place for a moment. Please rise.